Hello everyone and welcome back to Flashy and Puddles. I'm your host, Puddles. Today we're going to be talking about some quick tips and tricks that I've picked up in my almost 10 years of playing World of Warcraft. These are just assorted tidbits of information in no order whatsoever, and I hope that at least one of these will help you out. So without further ado, let's get into it. Always log out in a capital city or inn. This will increase the amount of rested XP that you get when you log in later. Rested XP doubles the amount of XP you gain from killing enemies. Bind your hearthstone to Orgrimmar if you're Horde, or Stormwind if you're Alliance. Having your hearthstone set to your faction's capital city makes traveling between zones easier, and several content beginning quests begin in these cities. If you don't know how to bind your hearthstone, talk to an innkeeper. If you don't know where the innkeeper of a capital city is, or anything in a capital city is, ask a guard. Buy and wear the tabard for your faction's main city, Stormwind for Alliance and Orgrimmar for Horde. This will help you build reputation with these factions. This will then help you get discounts on several things, especially riding training. Get a profession. Thanks to the current profession system though, you don't have to start working on it until endgame content. However, this will provide you with some nice gold income. To get a profession, talk to a profession trainer in any capital city. I recommend Herbalism and Alchemy for new players. Find an active guild. Odds are that you will get a few invites per day. Accept one of these and don't be afraid to leave if the guild is dead. An active guild makes your life a lot easier in endgame content, plus it also provides access to heirlooms for future alts. Play a character that you really like. There are 36 different specs to choose from, so odds are that you'll find something you like. Whether it's just switching your character's spec or re-rolling another character completely, I've made the mistake of before of trying to main a character that I didn't like just because it was the best at the time. Don't fall into that trap. Fall damage is a thing in World of Warcraft. Make sure you wear your correct armor class of gear as you get a buff for doing so. For mages, priests, and warlocks, this is cloth. For druids, rogues, monks, and demon hunters, this is leather. For hunters and shaman, this is mail. And for paladins, warriors, and death knights, this is plate. You can change your targets using the tab key, but it's a lot safer for you to just click your next target. Dying isn't that much of a penalty in-game. You simply have to run back to your corpse from the graveyard. If for some reason you can't run back to your corpse, first check if one of your friends can come and resurrect you. If that's not an option, then you can talk to the spirit healer in the graveyard. This should be a last ditch effort though as you get a 10 minute debuff that makes you almost useless and your gear takes massive durability damage. If you're leveling and somehow lose the thread of the quests, press shift J to open the adventure guide. There will be a breadcrumb quest to take you to a good location for you to start questing again. Try healing or tanking eventually. As someone who almost exclusively heals in tanks, I like dealing with people who have obviously done that role before and aren't just expecting you to be perfect. If you're not comfortable with these roles though, that's completely understandable. However, if you do try these roles, start on a new character in Dungeon Finder. At low levels, tanks are invincible, and healers never run out of mana, so it's very forgiving. The auction house may be very tempting, all that glittering gear just waiting for you to claim with that hard-earned gold. Don't give in to temptation. I only use the auction house to sell goods or for emergency material shortages, and it's gone well for me so far. Speaking of not buying gear, the low quality gear that vendors sell isn't worth it. You'll just get much better gear as you quest or go through dungeons. Keep your gear repaired. Every time you go into a town, visit the repair guy. There's always a repair guy, and you will always need repairs. Your gear will take damage anytime you do, except for in PvP. One of the most overlooked items, but undoubtedly the most useful, are your bags. Big bags are a really good investment, but don't go too big too fast, as they are expensive and you won't have that type of money at the start. The 16 slot nether weave bags are a great place to start. Try to keep your bags relatively empty. When you repair, you should also sell all of the stuff that you don't need. Vendor trash is just that, trash to sell to vendors. Any item with its name in grey is vendor trash and should be sold as soon as possible. When selling stuff to vendors, pay attention to what you're selling. If you mouse over a piece of equipment and hold shift, it will show a comparison of that item to your current item. If it's better than your current item, obviously equip it. Otherwise, make sure you have the appearance. If some text in light blue at the bottom of the item's description appears saying you have not yet collected this appearance, simply equip that item and re-equip your better item. This will add that item to your transmog log and you can now sell it. If you get a new item and don't know whether or not it's better than your current item, you have a few metrics to choose from. First is item level. Generally, if something is a higher item level, go with it. If something ties with item level, look on Icy Veins for your class's stat priority. Don't transmog your stuff until you reach max level and are fairly set on gold and gear. 
Trust me, you will save so much gold by just dealing with non-matching gear. The exception is hiding items. You can hide your cloak, belt, shoulders, and helmet all for free. Get riding as soon as it's available and affordable. Standard riding at level 20, epic riding at 40, flying at 60, and epic flying at 70. You should have enough gold to afford each of these when they come around up to epic flying. That might take some time. Also get the assorted flying licenses. There are riding trainers in capital cities, however you will have to buy your races mounted first and may have to go back to your starting zone. Install a few add-ons and familiarize yourself with how to get add-ons. At the very least, I recommend Deadly Boss Mods and Cell Junk as the two basic add-ons that I don't leave home without. If an enemy has a gold dragon around their portrait or their level is listed as two question marks, don't attack them on your own. Same goes for a silver dragon. An iron dragon is fine though. If you want to leave the trade chat because you need to be in a city for a while and trade chat is starting to get all political, type forward slash leave trade and hit enter. The same goes for any chat channel. Know your role. If you don't know which role you should be fulfilling with your class or spec, check out my intro to classes video. If you're in a dungeon and you're not the tank, don't pull any enemies. This is a very simple rule, but people tend to mess it up. A lot. If you're in a dungeon, turn off Growl if you're a hunter, and don't use a Voidwalker if you're a Warlock. These are both great outside of dungeons, but inside of dungeons you'll just get an angry tank and will probably be kicked. I'll be putting a list of most of the emotes you can perform in WoW in the description. You can do all sorts of stuff with the emote system, and a lot of them have sounds or animations associated with them. If you have questions in-game, feel free to ask other players. Most of them will be willing to help you. Just don't beg for gold or something like that, that's just annoying. You can't communicate with the other faction without some fancy workarounds. The only interaction where you can communicate is with the basic emote system. As far as leveling is concerned, yes, dungeon leveling is faster and most players level their characters this way. However, for your first character, I recommend sticking to questing. It will really let you experience WoW and not have the monotony of having to run Nomergon again. Plus, it lets you learn your class and the game in a low-stress environment, but do whatever you want to do. You know what, let's just sit here for a minute and take a look at what you would miss if you leveled through dungeons. Lastly, have fun! WoW is first and foremost a game and should be thought of as such. If someone thinks that it's so much more than a game and everyone else should be yelled at because it's more than a game, there's always the ignore option. Just right click their name in chat and select ignore. And that's all for this video. I hope that you found some of this information helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you like what I'm doing and would like to see more of it, please like and subscribe. Other than that, have a wonderful day everyone.